What's up YouTube? This is Clay Pokemon and welcome back to another video. So uh, this is like the third time of recording this. I didn't realize that my mic wasn't, you know, plugged in properly. So um, today's video, we're going to talk about the echo chamber effect that we're seeing in the Pokemon trading card investment market right now and especially on YouTube. And the second thing to cover is my thoughts or my feelings towards the current market trend and, you know, whether it is doing really well, doing really bad or, you know, it's just a eh, meh kind of thing. So uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and let me know in the comment section what you guys think. So <clears throat> the echo chamber effect is uh, the idea that, you know, we hear things and uh, that kind of things is amplified. And I think that's the case in the Pokemon trading card investment market right now. Everyone is talking about <clears throat> the 151 Charizard. Every thumbnail I open, every thumbnail I see on YouTube, it's the same thing. And, um, <clears throat> and then uh, a lot of people would put uh, their own little spin to it saying how you know oh the entire 151 is doing really well uh, you know it doubled in price you know buy now and because of that it, it, it brings a lot of attention to the 151 Charizard and because of such attention um, you know Charizard is going up in price and it will continue to go up in price because the demand of that card is increasing but talking about supply and demand you need to understand that you know in general the demand of Pokemon cards hasn't risen that much or not as I've seen it. What is happening is that the supply of certain products are decreasing and because of that there is going to be some price um, adjustments such as the Evolving Skies Booster Box. And I did make a video before talking about the Evolving Skies Booster Box around two weeks ago saying how it has finally hit $700 and um, it's been two weeks and it is still at $700. And some sales are actually dropping below $600, $700, around like $680 or something along that line. This tells me that the demand didn't increase. The demand is the same. Overall, the adjustment is because the supply has dropped. And when the price goes up, people think it's the right time to sell. The supply increases. And that's why we see a fluctuation at around that $700 price range. And when will we see a greater growth is when we actually see an increase in demand, which I would expect later on uh, this month or early next month when Pokemon Pocket is released. Well, the, the effect actually, um, it, it's going to go on for a little bit more longer, but yeah. So not at this moment. The, the, the market at this moment is actually quite stable. It is quite balanced. It is just making adjustment because of the decrease in supply and remaining high in demand and I mean you could say that you know hey Pokemon still has a high demand better than Digimon or something like that that's a good sign right yes that's a good sign but it doesn't mean that the market is doing like super well or something along that line now another thing that I've seen in a recent video is that some youtuber talking about hey we should really catch the wave and I, you know, we should buy those Pokemon cards right now, you know, buy Evolving Skies, you know, it's going to go to a team up price. Um, no, it's not. I mean, no, that it is not that it's not going to go to team up price, but it is going to be very, very risky when you are catching the wave. Simply because people spending habits are very, very different when it is a product that is under $500 and a product that is about $500. You know, anything under $500, if I want it, I just buy it. I don't even think about it. I don't even let it sit. You know, it's kind of like an impulsive buy. But anything that is about $500 is not an impulsive buy. It is a planned buy. You know, I would plan, I would look, I would, you know, look at the price and stuff. And, and you really think, should I spend that money? And because of that, products that are under $500 will move a lot faster than products that are over $500. So, um, yeah. And when I say $500, I actually mean $100 US because there is actually another ceiling at around $300, US, so that's that you have to consider as well. So when you're catching the wave with things such as Elite Trainer Box with the 151, that's fine. You know, it's sitting at around $80, $90. It can easily go to $150, $200. US. But if you want to catch the wave for things such as um, Evolving Skies, definitely don't do it because, you know, you could have better spent that money elsewhere and you'll get a higher ROI and a faster ROI. So um, yeah, that's my take into that. Now, the final part of this video is my take on the overall Pokemon card market right now, um, which I actually haven't made a video talking about it. 
Um, as you guys know, I collect a lot of the high-end collectability, you know, very classical cards like the Poncho, the Mario Luigi, uh, like the Punch, the Scream, the Van Gogh, Pikachu. And to be very honest, uh, the high-end market is really, really dull. Anything that is above $2,000 or was above $2,000, we're not seeing a lot of movement. If anything, Scream Mimikyu has dropped in price. Scream Pikachu has dropped in price. I think the only card that actually went up in price is the PSA 10 Munch Psyduck. Luigi Pikachu, Mario Pikachu, stagnant. You know, it's been stagnant for like, I don't know, two years now. Which, which actually, it's really healthy because uh, stagnation is good because stagnation means supply and demand are stable. But there are some products that we've seen a significant drop. Um, XY279, you know, the uh, Fiesta Pikachu cards that everyone is after and it was like PSA 10 for 10,000 US dollar. You know, it's been sitting around six, seven thousand US dollar at the PSA 10, and, and the price is actually dropping. What we're seeing is that there is not a lot of serious collector in the market right now, and you know we have a lot of little baby people, um, you know, getting into the market. That's why we see hype in a lot of the more modern sets because those are much more accessible. You know. Why are we not seeing price rise in a cosmic eclipse? Why are not why, why are we not seeing any price change in the XY era? And the, the reality is that modern collectors or new collectors are not as invested yet, so that you know we're not seeing an uptick of those cards yet. Now, but with more and more people getting into Pokemon, eventually, I think that it will trickle down to it. So it's going to be interesting to see how this or this group of new collectors, new investors are going to mature. Because to me, I am like this old fart, which is like, uh, you know, I've been in the market for almost eight years, 10 years. And um, yeah, and the current population, the current population that is looking, watching these videos, maybe only in the hobby for a year, two years. And I think that it will definitely take some time before we distill them into those serious collectors that will buy up certain higher end cards and um and uh, to be honest and i think that uh, i do believe that it will happen because as people make more and more money from flipping selling the lower end product they can save up enough to buy a higher end product but i just think it takes time and that time could be five years, could be eight years, could be 10 years. So um, yeah, Pokemon investment, you need patience. So that's what I'm trying to uh, let you guys know. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Um, and um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace, this is Clack Pokemon. Bye-bye.